Good morning, everyone. We're quite a large group here, I see that. I hope you had a really safe and relaxing winter break. I'm sure you all deserved it after a spectacular, unusual fall semester. So this is the, the intro session for Nanotectonica. Um, just to make sure you're in the right place. And first of all, happy inauguration day to everyone. I think it's a very special moment. So I'm going to start to um, share my screen because I realize that some will watch this as a recording and they really don't want to spend that much time because they're going to go and watch another uh, few seminars. And therefore, I, I decided to start like really quick so that we have like sort of little bits of approaches to what this could be this semester. And then I go into sort of a longer form. If you're still interested and on inauguration hasn't started, we can address some details that I'm really passionate about, but sort of give an overview of just a few minutes. So I'm sharing the screen. I'm wondering which screen you're seeing right now. It doesn't indicate this. Does it have a sort of a, 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 a waterish or like a dune sandish background? Sandish. Okay, that's what I wanted. That's great. So. Yeah, so welcome again. I try to do this in these quick bits, as I just said. So there is this, this one minute video that's already online. I think you, you've seen that, that video, so I don't have to show that again. The summary is when it starts to uh, talk about nature here, it's uh, careful with the term and sometimes puts it in quotes or capitalizes it, which kind of suggests that that idea itself is of interest here. So it talks about the impossibility of distinguishing nature um, from technology, which I think if you're, you know, especially if you're using a microscope or a technological instrument or anything like that, this, this might be of interest. So seminar tries to define a different sort of understanding of the term natural structure um, or natural structures that includes also, you know, synthetic and man-made or human-made structures, not just carbon-based grown structures. And, you know, also tries to identify a new term of what, what it means if a structure is alive or living. Um, and it's interested, you know, on the one side in a real sort of deeper understanding of these structures and those are at various scales. and Another part of it is being highly speculative and not really believing so much in the, the scientific method per se, but we also critically discuss the, the use of these instruments themselves. So that the next minute would be sort of just visuals. And I'm just gonna let that scroll play through. And maybe I don't even want to talk about it much. I mean, it does suggest that this is not a theory class uh, per se, but really it's about design and you know making stuff. Um, and so this is a kind of a potpourri of, of images of nanotectonica student work from over you know, a decade or so. I think it gets older to the bottom. So this is older stuff now. Um, and you see all kinds of uh, design production elements from you know, models, physical models, digital models, drawings of all sorts, uh, you know, analytical kinds and generative and operative ones and speculative drawings. I we're really interested in, in drawings themselves as a, as a real sort of uh, powerful tool. Um, and, you know, the, the analysis of the, uh, or this, let's say the scientific method of it, is kind of a nice framework um, that sort of opens up all kinds of uh, speculative moments. So I think we're about at the end of that minute. Okay. Do you then, yeah. Um, will you be able to let uh, other people in? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to make me co-host, I can. And make you a co-host, Luz. Good to see you, by the way. Um, there are a couple of familiar faces, and actually, not just from the um, sort of studios that are taught, but also from reviews of other of colleagues' studios, which is great. I hope everybody's in now, and Luz should be able to let other people in as well. Everybody's welcome, of course. For those of you who just joined, 
This is the introduction session of Nanotectonic. Just so you know, we are being recorded because this is shared for those who are um, currently in other intersections. I was just showing uh, some images. So let's try to move on. I promise to do that quick intro bits. So if you're moving to the next session, you can, you have an idea. So that was like scrolling through just the visuals as sort of the mixed potpourri of design production in the seminar. And now I'm going to scroll through another page, which is, and this is a, a Facebook page, and I'm not recommending anybody join Facebook. I suppose most of you aren't already on there, but you can visit such a group without being uh, logged into Facebook. At least that's what I did here, I think. So this is interesting if you have a minute and you want to sort of explore the whole world of sort of research topics that have come up in the course, then you can just scroll through this and you see it's both basically just sort of posted articles in and around the world of science, technology, art and design, you know, and what more interesting field could there be. And now uh, here's another approach. This is a diagram. And just to show like the many, many different uh, topics that, you know, we're addressing. And I think we're gonna be addressing them all. And it's really up to you which ones we're digging in deeper. Um, but you see here an area of maybe ideas or maybe competing models for design or approaches on how to theorize design itself. Um, so there's a, a lot of these uh, dichotomies popping up with, you know, this is more on the uh, algorithmic generative side and that's more on the sort of the deterministic or compositional or sort of transcendent side. And um, it migrates a little bit to, you know, just math, straightforward math with geometry and, um, you know, ideas of recursive systems and fractal systems and all these kind of math models that we are surrounding ourselves with. And then towards the right, you see more sort of ideas of what would be even scales for architectural implications, the city and you know engineering scales in terms of what is it that we're affecting, are we making materials, are these you know engineering structures or um, is it straightforward, like architecture, are we producing artifacts or are we creating architectural systems? And then there is, if you go this further north a little bit on that diagram, you see like a whole bunch of characters and it's like a really diverse group. And so you see uh, analogous to this whole math part, you see people like Stephen Wolfram and his recursive systems or Lindemeyer, but also, you know, at the very top, here in this uh, line is Robert Hooke, sort of the first guy who published um, books with uh, microscopic images. And so I'm gonna say this was more than a minute already. So this is basically it. If you wanted to just get a very, very quick idea of what the seminar could be about. Let me ask you at this point already, are there any questions? So it's a bunch of people, hi. Just real quick, are you guys like all over the world or are you in Brooklyn or where are you? Brooklyn. <laughs> Me too. Brooklyn. Anybody out of the country with different time zones or anything? I'm currently on the West Coast, but. <laughs> okay, so three hours early, that's very early for you, right? Yes, it is. You, it's actually early, hours, get up. <laughs> but it's mm -hmm. not so bad. Yeah, I'm actually in Colorado, so it's only two hours, which is oh, so hours. terrible. But uh, seven thirty okay. is a is a call, though. Okay, well, <laughs> it's really nice to see you, and so we're moving a little bit into the longer form of this. And you know, I try to make this kind of. I mean, I don't have to make it relevant, but I make want to make it have some immediacy to the the stuff that we're you know engaging with right now, or what's on our minds, right? So, I mean, this time is a very particular one, it's needless to say. I mean, it's been like a year now that we lived in the pandemic. So it has started now that we're all taking vaccines. I mean, this is uh, available not for everyone, right? So we, it's clear that the sort of social political uh, injustice here comes together in time of 
environmental crisis and you know how these things actually relate and something like the virus itself can actually communicate those relationships um, so it's a, a point of convergence if you will and um, the story really of the virus itself the way that it has emerged through animal human interactions and also you know the current efforts to contain it through biological processes like the mRNA vaccines. It's a very new kind of biological process that's employed. So it challenges really the idea of nature versus technology in a quite direct sense. So this is the, the naming of that virus, which actually doesn't come from the, the, the crown itself, but really specifically the, the, the solar corona and that aura of plasma that extends you know millions of kilometers like surface normals from the star and then but the name comes from there but it's actually referring to these spikes of the virus that are you know 20 nanometers and that's not something you could see optically because it's smaller than the wavelength of light so we're doing the electron microscope which you know you have probably heard by now is kind of a prompt in the seminar. So I think that there is this, there's a certain poetics here between sort of this deadly virus and the, you know, the, the solar halo, if you will. So that relationship, I think, is interesting. But it also points, I think, to, to desire of really putting these scales together. Um, and that's not just a desire, I think, by designers, you know, I think that uh, theoretical physics has been, you know, that's their, what's their do, right? I mean, it's still not really so that we can bring together the theories of the, the big and the small so easily. And certainly, you know, we have to acknowledge that there isn't really such a thing as a scalia continuity, really, but there are ideas of universality that are really interesting. And I think we're sort of probing into, into an arena there that has an interest that's sort of directly architecturally of relevance, namely scale, but also I think is conceptually really strong trajectory. So let me, you can read this or not, or you can just read the white words and then that should already sort of trigger some thoughts. This is a really old clip by um, Charles and Ray Eames that I'm sure you guys have seen. It's really old, it's like 45 years old almost. And it sort of stands a little bit for that desire. And I'm not going to show the clip. I'm just going to scroll through it, you know, scale of a guy in a park in Chicago. And then, you know, zooming out, so to say, uh, into galactic scale. And then coming back into his hand and the cellular and molecular structure. So this is kind of the classic. And there's really, I mean, somebody should write the history of this. There's a whole like lineage of films that have been produced with this exact same topic and structure of the film, but with much more developed filmic and also like algorithmic devices. So we're, so there's a, an interest in theory, you know, looks at the idea of the smallest and also, you know, that maybe there's a critical discourse around atomism or reductionism of that nature, which is always a tendency when we are, you know, entering into sort of the scientific domain. There's the desire to decode and to work sort of at the bottom of this all. And I think there's a really valid uh, sort of dimension in design that we're, we're covering with this, but we need to look at this critically and also open up to very different forms of individuation or you know, the, ultimately it's about the discussion, how this stuff becomes or grows, or do we actually design it actively? Or what's the format of design? Do we actually still plan stuff? And, you know, my, my interest, for instance, both the, the robotics as well as the materials to be, you know, elevated to a level where we take their sort of design suggestions quite literally and seriously. And that, not a more fun way of thinking about design, but it's also a much broader engagement, I think. So it is talking about, or we're talking about here, largely about design research, and there's different sort of ways of you understanding that term even. And I think one is 
fundamental like ontological question what that even is right and that what's the creative act that's like a term that's not very popular because it's always associated with subjectivity um and therefore maybe not you know an object of, of the real uh, investigation but i think that we're we can't say that design uh, research is really just about design itself and the other thing is how we thinking about design research is project oriented so whatever your research interests are and you know uh, i'm kind of in the business helping you define that you will do additional research that is you know of historical nature or it will have to do with an adjacent field so that would be like project based research right that you're all familiar with it's usually part of every design studio at the beginning there's a little bit of research that's directly uh, sort of utilized as stuff for the design right either conceptual or you know material or you know information this information base for launching a design process so that's the project based design research that i'm referring to and then there is a third dimension and that's a little bit more of a kind of a um a made up thing um and so a disclaimer this is not sort of an a, a proven design research that has been sanctioned in any way um but i think it's a useful one um which is the looking at this operations with the electron microscope um, as a model for design so in that sense this third way of design research as we're engaging in it um, is both very very tangible and sort of immediate and how do i say here concrete right because it's just research right like in a scientific sense i'm looking at uh, this specimen and i'm producing this original research that's easy and that's clearly a concrete output and sort of definition of the term but the other one is super speculative it's like saying the way that we are engaging with the device is actually a model for design and i think the electron microscope is actually very particular because it really doesn't work with light right not with optics but it's kind of a blind process and i'm going to refer back to that it's a really interesting um i think um thought to follow even if you don't buy into it i think it it, it brings up a, a bunch of uh, things i mean then there is the other part about that um the most obvious one is that it carries an aesthetic uh you know set of qualities these these images you could work with you know i also encourage students to not necessarily go down the uh, the scientific uh, loop but you know embrace um you know aesthetics and the discussion and also sort of the cultural discussion of the image itself um what um so maybe it's also a little bit to be distinguished from notions of like bionics and biomimicry i think a bunch of times it it sort of directly mapped onto uh things that we're discussing but it's not quite the same um because those are really sort of in the business of sort of um grabbing an idea in nature and sort of putting it in an engineering or design often industrial design context um you know they're some cases architectural context too but sort of that direct translation is a little bit less of interest for us um so you know like the idea that the i don't know the um the lizard can climb up the wall or whatever and the way that you know the, the toes work and the skin structure that's why you know my structure is a clean facade was i'm not sure that that's kind of the the relationships that we're interested in um and we actually we are prompting the your projects with the uh, uh imagery coming from this particular source um but we're not married to it at all you know this is a design process this is you is helping you you know finesse a design engine for yourself if you will that's the sort of the the interest it's what i'm saying it's not like uh interested in biomimicry per se and you know there's the, the as open as it is in terms of your design interests i think as structured is the course itself um and i actually find it useful not just for me as a teacher but for you to develop real freedom if there is some kind of a reference some kind of just even sort of a media sequence a suggested one or a topical one and so i think it's trying to provide just enough sort of reference structure and maybe constraints 
so that you feel comfortable and inspired, but it also is completely open to, um, because it is in the business of helping you develop an idea about design yourself. So then these phases that I'm talking about, this sort of highly structured component of it, there's a, another trajectory and that looks into uh, historical uh, references. Um, and I don't know if I have an image here. I think I do here. And um, so this is, um, I showed this in the diagram, some of these authors, it's mostly in the last sort of hundred years with a couple of exceptions. Um, um, I, I want to say that there is a interest in discussing them critically. So some of these authors also, you know, are carrying ideologies that, you know, we need to look at very, very skeptically. Um, and others are just straight up in, in inspiring. These are kind of drawings that came out of sort of the analytical part of the uh, design production. And I'm intentionally showing with different eras almost, like this was on the left, like there was a time when people would be doing hand scripted uh, VB scripts and, you know, then there's sort of a lot of straightforward drawing. I think um, drawing is very important, as I mentioned. Um, let me see, there were a couple of other visuals because we're now in the slow form, so I can dwell on an image. Um, taxonomies um, and sorting these um, structures that we're looking at and sort of being kind of aware of what the design discourse is, like what era we're in and what we're basing it all on. And I guess I want to say that regarding the, the production of the design, so if there's a kind of a historical research element, there's also design research itself and then we're also producing stuff, right? Um, and we're not interested necessarily in pursuing an algorithmic project. For instance, I'm well, so the idea of that is really important to sort of consider. I think that the desire to generate design has been around for quite some time. And sort of the critique of the, um, I guess the compositional method um, and the designer's hand has been around for quite some time. Um, but I think we need to discuss the uh, the, the so-called algorithmic project, you know, as a sort of a pure design format, very very critically, I believe. And sort of the big the biggest ambition of I think our discussion would be to develop and test really um, methods of design that are much more integrative or integrated, not necessarily holistic, but integrating aspects and sort of on the one side um claiming some design authority but not necessarily just for us but whatever the design uh, machine that we're uh, part of um so some intentionality um but sort of complete openness in in where the journey goes with respect to the design um gestalt maybe with a suggested set of um tools as sort of a format um, but as a very, very open model, I think that if we develop something like this, or you for yourself, even as sort of part of the studio, then that would be a very successful or a well spent spring semester. Um, let me look at the time. Yeah, we have plenty of time. Good. You guys want to say something? Is this interesting? So um, I suppose you can hear me. Hi, uh, can I ask yeah, a question? Of course, yeah. So um, it strikes me that there are a huge number of potential kind of launching points in, in all the material that you presented in terms of in terms of a project, in terms of our own individual projects. So. Um, you know, I could imagine taking any one concept of the, I don't know, hundred or so you've presented and making a project out of that. Um, yeah. Will it be the case? So, I mean, I already have some ideas about what I could do in that regard, but is it the case that this material that you're presenting is a sort of 
is intended in that way as prompts for us to then take an idea that we have within this framework, take the, take the sort of rich um, array of knowledge and material that you're, you're putting in front of us and then investigate our own line of inquiry in that sense. Or is that, um, like, is that kind of approach to a project a good one? Or are you seeking projects that um, are more kind of holistic in the way that they look at these, this thesis you're presenting as a whole? Um, so I guess I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, how, um, I don't know, does that make sense, that question? It does. Absolutely. I think this okay. is a really good question. Uh, thank you for it. It's a, uh, actually, that's a, uh, maybe one of the best questions you could have about the seminar. And I, I'm uh, happy to answer it with yes, um, which is okay. you, if you carve out of this your own project and the semester is useful for you in developing maybe your own project, like with a capital P, um, yeah then that would be a fantastic scenario. If it is so that you don't really have any particular interest right now and you just wanna sort of let some inspiration come in and you need a little guide and maybe daring to pursue a research, then you know that would be fine too. In fact, I'd be thrilled because then I think I could be contributing a lot. Um, but I'm not going to be in the way, for instance, like if um, the happiest I am, if I see a student developing an idea. Um, so that's something that's very precious. And I think we have the freedom in an elective uh, seminar um, in this format. We have the freedom to do that. We don't have the freedom to do that uh, to the full extent in any studio. So I think that's a characteristic of a seminar like this. And so I think your question, I hope I answer it. It's a really good question. Yes, absolutely. I mean, because it, it strikes me that, well, I personally haven't done any design electives before. Um, so it strikes me as an opportunity to um, kind of investigate my own lines of inquiry in a way that I don't necessarily get the, um, the um, freedom to do in a studio. Um, but obviously, for all of us that you know if we're coming to the elective with that approach then it needs to be needs to be aligned with all the material in the you know that you're you're working with so yeah um, but for me that's certainly the case but I'm, yeah i mean so, you could say so that it is does answer the question it's the it's very focused um in addressing design and it's also very open in uh you know, venturing out in different directions to explore space that, you know, could uh, both extend and maybe also sharpen the idea of what design is. That's uh, where it comes together. Um, yeah, yeah I, that's a great question. Um, I mean, the, okay. the, there's sort of one part of it where I'm asking you to do a little uh, report. And maybe I want to also, I just see that um, Valeria is here. I want to introduce you to Valeria Sedilos. Um, Valeria, I don't know if you're listening in right now. Yes, I'm here. Good morning, oh, you're there. Everyone. So maybe I go out of the share screen for a second. Um, yeah, so Valeria um, was a student of this seminar one year ago, right? And prior to that, she was in the um, urban design studio um, that I taught. Uh, last year, and she's been. She was also the the TA or the research assistant, rather, of the seminar last year. And um, in the last semester, this fall 2020, um, we were doing a little bit of uh, work during my sabbatical on nanotectonica, putting like a book together. Um, so we've been. This is independent and away from the teaching here, but you know. We've been discussing nanotectonica quite a bit throughout the whole fall semester. And so I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that she is uh, joining us. And, you know, I don't know, you can ask her questions. And also after our meeting, um, because she had the experience of being a student here. Um, you want to say anything, Valeria? <laughs> yeah. Well, hi, everyone. I'm so happy to see a lot of you are interested in this 
amazing course. Um, to be honest, as Ben just asked previously, um, looking at all the work, uh, this is a very solid seminar. It has over 12 years in the making. So this gives you all the chance to really pursue any sort of um, opportunities in design that you're willing to take. Uh, Jonas is a great instructor. He, he really knows how to orient this design research. Um, I, I was personally always interested in the aesthetics of the class. You know, we, I was seeing it a lot in school and promoted in the social in the school social media. But once I took it, I, I took the seminar. It was it was just so much fun. I I feel like I learned a lot both in theory of the whole process that is behind the work, and in skills because we even my teammate and I really pushed. Um, the threshold of learning new software and new representation skills, especially since we had the COVID transition from physical to digital. So, um, thank you. Give me also opportunity to clarify that this is not a tools course. I'm not going to teach you software. Um, just to be clear about that, um, I wish I could. I had the time to do it. Actually, I used to do this a long time ago, and it's fun. Um, but this is, I'm not going to teach you Grasshopper or something like that. If you're interested in Grasshopper, that's awesome. And, you know, there's all great opportunities to pick up that skill at Pratt. And I encourage you to do so, but I'm not, all, I can't provide that in the seminar just to make that clear. Again, no false expectations. Um, yeah. Um, and, well, thank you for inviting me, Jonas. I'm going to uh, stick around here for a while if anybody yeah. has any additional questions. More Valeria, like by the way, has also been co-teaching with Stephen Slaughter in the last semester, and they did a fantastic <laughs> studio together, right? Um, that was in Cincinnati at the waterfront, and, you know, really picked up an urban scale. It's kind of wonderful to see, especially an urban design student, uh, to be helping out in an architecture studio. I think that's a very uh, fruitful combination, and so welcome, Valeria, to this side of the uh i'll so to say uh as a co-teacher or a fellow faculty member um all right um so we can go ahead a little bit benjamin right benjamin's question i think was so right on so the way that i'm thinking about these historical um little bits reports if you will and maybe i can launch back into the yeah yeah okay cool um, so his question about the, um, in how far is this directed research and how far is this an individual's project um, and this is providing the space of nurturing that project. Um, and in that same way, I'm looking at these historical um, points of departures really as such, as points of departure, as launching paths where you can choose a topic that may be in some way related to something you're interested in anyway, or if it's new to you, that it could be developing something like this. So I want to just sort of skip over these slides to get to that point. So you see like a vast array of, I mean, even just in the syllabus of topics that are sort of adjacent to that field of interest, um, but quite diverse, right? So, um, that doesn't mean that you become an expert on a particular, I don't know, um, form of uh, building physical computation models like Fry Auto or how to draw the sort of the neural network between the brain and the eyeball or something like, you know, but these could be things that you're actually looking into and they could launch something for your uh, own uh, research project, right? So these usually in this first session, I give you these topics already. That's why I'm sort of jumping there. Because if you take the seminar, you could, you know, might as well get a quick overview, right? So we have 19th and 20th, early 20th century um, naturalists that, you know, we, we can discuss. That's something that's a really sort of fine um area of investigation um and it's a lot of really cool visual material available uh if you're looking at uh, microscopia um uh, or micrographia rather by robert hook right so 
or uh, sort of these nature mechanical drawings by Raoul Francais also, you know, around that uh, time, turn of the century, last century. Um, there's more engineering art and engineering uh, references. And Gilgit Kappas is an example from MIT, He's produced beautiful artistic science uh, drawings and visualizations. Um, Fry Otto is a very sort of uh, rich topic and his various projects um, as they pertain to build work and to, to research and the categorization of uh, structures and others, other fairly complex engineering examples of Bachmann Safula or Robert Laricule. These are kind of sort of the engineers that have looked into uh, natural structures and they have developed uh, models or ideas of what natural structures could be. And there are actually quite contemporary thoughts in that engineering group if you compare that to contemporary discourse of uh, ecological thinking. Um, so these are some studies of the Fry Auto Institutes in Stuttgart, just beautiful stuff. Trying to go through this a little quicker. So these could be topics that you could just choose, you know, once we got the roster together, we, you know, the, you can just start sort of investigating it. An Ting is another really, um, important character and also in the realm of uh, tectonics and architecture and then you know sort of in the in the area of math and computational models I think one um, author is really important Christopher Langton to define like a terminology for artificial life which I think is super interesting we have had an artificial intelligence AI discussion in our sort of uh, architecture communion. And I think that artificial life is a little bit sort of overlapping that interest, but it's also a little bit closer to discussing the design process rather than um, the sort of the machine. There is sort of a certain sense of saying that, you know, artificial life is a little bit more bottom up in arriving in some intelligence um, and it's not necessarily a model of human intelligence. So then, you know, algorithmic or recursive systems by Lindenmeyer, you know, simply just sort of these models of growing trees or sort of creating a new little species that has sort of can be mapped into spatial expression. Same thing with the cellular automata with, uh, by Stephen Wolfram. Um, and in a certain sense, also related to fractal systems. There are a bunch of more larger sort of theoretical fields that I've been discussing with students recently. They're not necessarily the format of the presentation, but if you have an interest in that direction, you're more than welcome to sort of discuss that with me in a little bit more detail. And then we can sort of frame the topic um, according to also your interests and, you know, maybe also previous interests or work if you've worked on something i've also noticed that the, the the seminar is very useful for students that are in some kind of a thesis format you know whether it be that they're doing a sort of a degree project or they are um, part of, uh, they're, they're, they're working on their sort of post professional uh, project description and research interest but I think even in a in a vertical studio or in an advanced regular design class, it could be helpful to to actually also quite simply use the seminar to elevate a particular aspect of it, which would then be the the material of your nanotectonica seminar. But it would be conducive or supportive of uh, maybe a, a project of a larger scope that you are pursuing, either conceptually or you know, as a design project, a, a larger scope in another class. So I think this is a sort of an openness about this. I think I, my understanding of graduate school just generally is that um, you do uh, transpositions and transfer operations within your coursework. I mean, it's all your work, right? It's all your project altogether. So when, you know, there are courses that lend themselves to be 
sort of like uh, maybe supporting the synergy there, then um, I think this could be one of them. Any other questions right now? 